So this is the fault that I have. ABS light on, traction control light on. So I suspect that is a swollen ABS ring that's damaged the sensor. So this video will document how I have attempted to repair that or hopefully repaired that. And this is why I suspect that I have a, a problem with the uh, weed, weed speed sensor or the, the reluctor ring ABS ring in the back. Uh, this is the code coming up, uh, 5DB2. It's in German there, I'll have to translate it. But I have checked up that code and it does refer to the rear passenger wheel. So we'll go to the rear passenger wheel and have a look, uh, take the sensor out and have a look at the ring, at the ABS ring, and spin the hub around and see uh, if there's any wee shiny bits or bits sticking up or breaks that would indicate that it's maybe swollen up and hit the sensor. So we'll do that now and see what the result is. So if the car uh, safely jacked up and the wheel off, uh, one of the first things it did also was to detach that sensor there. It's a five millimeter Allen holds that we holds it in behind there, and basically. Yeah, I just move that so that when I'm wiggling about the drive shaft or the, uh, the drive shaft to get it out that it don't damage the sensor. So the car is jacked up and just sitting on an axle stand there, an axle stand over there. I've got the wheel under the car. I've got a jack under the diff as well, and I also stacked up a little concrete block there just below the height of the car. Looks like it's up to the height of the car, but it's not. There's no weight on it. Uh, and I have another axle stand under that arm across there. And I did have this one under that arm there, just to be completely safe. And uh, nothing's going to come down. So I've already removed the little ABS sensor from that hole there. You can see it lying there. See it just lying there. So I've already removed that. So I'll take that big nut, nut off the end of the drive shaft. And then I need to work my way in here and as you can see there are one two three four five six torques style uh, not holding that on to the diff. So, apologies, this camera work is terrible. What I'm going to do is, I've got myself a little E12 spanner. I 
because it's a lot easier to do with the spanner than it is with a socket. And basically, I had to clean these up a bit, but loosen them like this. It's quite slow the way I'm doing it. I am going to be putting on the hard brake, loosening that one, coming back, spin it around a little bit, put the hard brake back on, because I'm on my own. Back up with the spanner, loosen that one. And I gotta work my way around all of them until I have them all loose. Once that's loose, you can actually pull. Once you get them all loose and take them all off, there's little brackets come off with them. There's a bracket goes between it, a pair. You can actually pull this away from the diff slightly and down and let it lay on top of the exhaust here. Once you have that done, you need to come in here and start tackling these. That one's a bit screwed. Pushing that rubber off the edge, holding the exhaust on. So you have one there. You have one there. And then there's one up there as well, towards the back. They're all the same. You push the rubber that direction. They're, they're quite hard actually, they're very fiddly. So once I get all that off, once I get those three detached, I'll be able to pull the exhaust and drop it down a bit. And then, with the exhaust dropped down, I will be able to position the drive shaft in this little area here where there's a bit of a gap now with the exhaust down. I will go around to the hub then. And I will, once that nuts off, I will then start tapping this with a bit of a bar or something on a mallet. Tap, 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 and work it out. So it'll be, it'll be hanging down, the exhaust will be hanging down, and working out through this gap here towards the passenger wheel, and then I'll be able to pull it away. And then fitting the new one is just the reverse, putting it all back up in again through this gap. So I'll undo all of those six nuts I just showed you on this which is already loose and then i'll pull these exhaust rubbers off and drop the exhaust down and i'll start a bit of a dent i don't know if it's meant to be there or not and then i'll start tapping the drive shaft out through that hole so i'll come back to you shortly so i have to say getting these rubber Fix, fixings that hold the exhaust up in place they are really difficult to get off um, a lot of fiddling with them prying them with screwdrivers and stuff basically that bar there fits into that hole there and it pushes right through and that bit there pops out the other side so there's one there I've actually jammed the exhaust down uh, a bit to try and help me get the axle out and there's another one here if I can get the camera on it properly yeah there's another one there so this is looking in from the back of the car there's the back of the exhaust you've got one there you have another one here and then you have another one up there see it's sticking out there and you can see the rubber above it you do all that and then you can pull the exhaust down a little bit and then you create a gap up in there to pull the axle through so that's how i got it out actually it wasn't the worst i got it out to be completely honest i lined it up with that hole you can basically see the hole below the drive below the diff there i lined it up with that hole I used a mallet and a little bit of a bar and tapped tapped it through while guiding it into that hole in there. I did it on my own, so you can't do it on your own. And then eventually it popped out. I was able to pull it down that direction towards the driver's side of the car through the gap. So above the exhaust, but under the car. You create that gap by pulling the exhaust down 
basically that far and wedging it down. I went through the gap and then was able to bring it up onto the desk. So that's how I got it out. It's going to be the exact reverse uh, to try and put it in. So this is the old uh, output shaft out. And this is the second hand one I bought that I'm going to put in. And um, as you can see there, a friend of mine tried to help avoid replacing the ring by fitting a new one that I bought off eBay for four pound each or something onto the output shaft. But we noticed that it was actually very loose. It went on there and it went on very loose and it sort of you could spin it and stuff when it was on this far. So I think it was that was so badly corroded it was a bit out of shape. So uh, what my friend kindly did was make a wee strip of metal that went round there to try and widen that out and then that fitted tight but when we put it back on it still didn't work the air was still there so i only presume this is slightly oval or else the metallic material under there is interfering with the sensor somehow well, either way something's not right so back to the drawing board 40 quid got me this second hand one uh a bit of discoloration but it doesn't look like it's been uh, swollen up due to corrosion or anything like that. It looks pretty much like a perfect circle. As far as I can see. So, I'm going to put that one in. At the minute, uh, this is a wee bit full of crud and these are full of crud. I'm still cleaning these. So, I'm basically just cleaning them with wire brush on some kitchen roll. Try and get these as clear as possible. And this, uh, whatever this surface with a drill. Uh, with a wire brush in of it just to smooth that down just that surface there just get a bit of corrosion off So I need to clean all of this a little bit more because when you push that into the hub That can be very hard to push through the hub uh, I've struggled with it before so I want this as clean as possible So that when I go to put it into the hub, there's no issues So I'll keep cleaning that then I'll try and reinsert it into the cart Okay, um I haven't got the new drive shaft in full yet but as you can see it is in nearly all the way so i'm going to try and go under here this is this is the back bumper exhaust still hanging down so in under here if you see it's very difficult there's not very much space apologies for the camera work the exhaust can be you can see it there moved up and down so I pulled it down and then came up in here with the drive shaft. So from the passenger side towards the driver side, pull the exhaust down. You need to pull it down from the back and wedge it down. It's pretty hard to do by hand with one hand anyway. Put the drive shaft up through in that hole and then guided it you can see there I'll move the light guided it into the hub you can see the ABS ring there just where that uh, just basically right in there in the corner just in front of that boot so I was able to push it in by hand a little bit of the way. I'll try and get the light here. I was able to push it that way, a little bit of the way by hand, and then it got really stiff and I couldn't do it anymore. So what I did was I got apologies lying on the ground. Video one with one hand is difficult. I got these grips and I grabbed onto the axle nice and tightly or the drive shaft nice and tight and then I used this to hit it to hit the vice grips in that direction 
so that it pushed the drive shaft into the hub out far enough on this side so that it just tap 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 and it worked its way out and then it was able eventually to get this nut on quite a few threads on and then all I really did was tighten that with a ratchet which pulled the drive shaft that way until it was right in tight then once I've it lined up we have one two and a wee, a wee uh, C clamp between them three four five six uh, six nuts to tighten up now they're torques a little spanner I can't find it because I'm lying on the ground but I find it very difficult to get a socket on there because of this boot it gets in the way but I have a little ring spanner Torx size E12 I think it is and I've just got enough room to get it on there get about a quarter of a turn and I'm just going to work at them on the plus side though you can move this around which gives you more rotation for tightening so I've got them all in they go right through you can see them there they go right through that way you can see it there and this will stick out this back part of the, a little bit so basically all they need is to tighten them up I don't know what the Torx setting is for those but I'll find out <coughs> and then I'll tighten that up I think that's 259 newton meters but I'll have to go and find out uh, so basically that's all I need to do and then put this little sensor back in A little sensor goes into that hole there. Very difficult to get the light in. But you can see the ABS ring through that hole. So that sensor there, that sensor there, just goes into that hole and you tighten it up with a five mil Allen. So we'll get working at that now and then give you an update. So, interestingly, the seatbelt alarm's going there, but interestingly, after driving for about 30 feet, all the lights went out. Now, I have no doubt this, the uh, faults are still stored in the computer, so I'll use INPA to clear the faults, but that's the first time the faults have went out in the last couple of weeks. The ABS is not kicking in now when I'm braking like it was and there's not all sorts of lights coming on. So I'm going to call that fixed. Um, obviously this video just documents how I did the procedure and I don't take any responsibility for everybody else trying this. And I have to admit I found this job quite hard. I'm not a mechanic uh, but it was a difficult job to do and it took me quite a long time and I actually had help for the first night or two while we tried the to replace the ABS ring so um, but it's doable I'm glad I did it it was a cheap fix it cost 40 pounds for the uh, for the drive shafts from a breakers it seems to be a good nick because it's fixed the problem I wasted eight quid on two rings well big deal I didn't have to pay any labor so Basically the whole thing has cost me about 50 quid. So after having fixed or repair or changed that output shaft and replaced the wheel speed sensor, this is now the results I'm having. So the error codes are staying away and I seem to be getting a, a good readout on all four wheels. So. I'm going to call this one fixed and that is how I have um, repaired this fault in my car. This video just illustrates probably not too well with camera work anyway, but how I was able to find out and repair, make this repair. So I hope if it does happen to anybody else out there, they can maybe uh, use this video as a guide to see what's involved. But thanks for watching.